So, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, as the case may be, everybody. My name is David Vanaski. I work in product marketing at Infoblox, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar uh, this morning, afternoon, or evening uh, on next level networking uh, and next level network automation for every DDI with Ansible. I'm here, and I'm joined by uh, two uh, um, two very very good people, uh, Sumat Jaswal. Uh, he is a senior software engineer working in the Ansible team uh, at uh, at Red Hat, uh, and Salish Kiri. He's a senior product manager who works with me on cloud uh, technologies and cloud products at Infobox. We're going to be we're going to be giving you uh, a presentation, uh, doing a demonstration, uh, and answering your questions with about the next 45 minutes. Um, Recently, that's the presentation and demonstration, and then we'll reserve the last 15 minutes or so for Q&A. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you carving out some time um, in your day to uh, listen to us and hear what we have to say. Yeah, thank you, Dave. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm, I'm Salish uh, Giri. I'm a product manager at Infoblox, and uh, I, I look after the cloud integrations uh, of, of our uh, networking products. So uh, before we get started, uh, let me uh, talk a bit about uh, uh, DNS, DHCP, and IPAM for, for the audience who, who are new to these concepts. So uh, DNS is a domain name system. It's a network service that provides domain name resolution. It basically maintains a, a database of IP addresses and their corresponding domain names. Uh, whenever a, D a DNS server receives a DNS query, it resolves the domain name and provides the corresponding IP address. DHCP is a dynamic host config protocol. It's a service that dynamically assigns IP addresses to, to DHCP clients. And uh, IPAM uh, uh, is a short form of IP address management. It, it acts as a single source of truth for the IP address management for your entire organization. It basically is an administration of uh, a DNS and DHCP services that uh, assign and resolve IP addresses in a TCP IP network. Uh, now, uh, traditionally, uh, IPAM is done via spreadsheets, right? The IP address landscape is, is maintained by uh, the network administrators where they, uh, they, they manually add or delete IP addresses from the spreadsheets. Uh, whenever a host uh, is added or deleted from the network. So uh, this makes the entire IPAM uh, um, lifecycle management tedious and prone to error, right? Uh, so these are some of the challenges. Uh, on top of that, uh, let's talk uh, something about the networking issues that, that companies or, or more specifically uh, the networking teams uh, grapple with. Uh, normally, the tasks and activities uh, relating to uh, managing the DNS, DHCP, and IPAM uh, address space, I mean, uh, that, that takes up a significant amount of time, right? You, you typically spend uh, a disproportionate uh, amount of time and energy pro, uh, 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 performing activities like uh, is issuing IP addresses to devices like printers, uh, etc., and creating subnets for your branch offices. Uh, so, so uh, this uh, from a from an, an, a network st uh, admin standpoint, this is tedious and difficult, right? And and today, almost every uh, uh, TCP uh, uh, IP based network uses DNS, and uh, that is why it becomes uh, all the more important for uh, for for us to to ensure that uh, these these uh, services are running and and provide uh, providing uh, uh, necessary uh, uh, cover to your applications right so if if basically dns fails uh, that means your your network fails uh, so, so uh, typically, these are some of the issues that uh, uh, enterprises uh, uh, face today. Uh, and um, um, just, just uh, one more point: uh, uh, enterprises have, uh, I mean, they have mostly migrated to cloud and and virtualization technologies, right? Anticipating that uh, this will bring agility to to their network. But if you're doing stuffs manually, if you're if you're creating and deleting IP addresses and DNS records uh, uh, manually, then there's no point uh, migrating to cloud, right? So, so if you are moving to some newer technologies, you should have 
everything i mean that should support your your entire migration effort and that's where uh, uh, solutions like uh, infoblox uh, uh, come into picture uh, so let's uh, move ahead and uh, let's talk about uh, talk a bit about infoblox and our dda solution so for those of you who don't know about infoblox we are a networking company and a market leader in, in core ddi uh, core network services that includes uh, uh, dns dhcp and ipa uh, we have more than uh, 50% market share in the ddi space and uh, Uh, we uh, offer core DDI services, SaaS products, advanced DNS protection, firewall, etc., and uh, we have a, a very very strong presence in cloud as well. And uh, we roughly has uh, we we have around uh, eight or more than eight thousand customers uh, till date, and uh, and have eighty three of the Fortune hundred uh, uh, companies as well, and. Uh, today i mean uh, we we are uh, uh, we have teamed up with uh, with uh, uh, sumit i mean from red hat to to show you how how the integration of uh, uh, and uh, infoblox with ansible uh, is 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 happening and then i'll be running some playbooks basically to show a demo of of what you can do currently with with our existing offering yeah so um, ddi as i said uh, stands for dns uh, dhcp and ipam uh, it's a platform that integrates all these uh, three services and provides a more accurate and uh, a more reliable network services to the users traditionally uh, these services dns dhcp and ipam uh, 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 worked in silos right so let's say you wanted to provision a vm so in order to deploy that vm onto the network you first had uh, had to uh, get an ip address from the dhcp server then you had to create a dns record for that vm in the database and uh, occasionally network then network administrators uh, or administrator used to keep an uh, uh, entry uh, of that ip address that is assigned into the spreadsheet so if you see all these three uh, steps are are related in a way right so you need some some uh, automation solution that can automate this entire procedure and then that's uh, where our solution our infoblox solution comes into picture and and it it helps you completely automate this entire uh, uh, process so uh, normally uh, when when you are doing this manually right you will have emails going back and forth between teams right so when uh, so uh, and it takes days and weeks uh, to to get this done and uh, this is where we we score and we we help uh, 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 faster i mean we help you deploy your your workloads faster on on to the cloud or on a prem whatever wherever you want so this is one example where where uh, we need a consolidated uh, consolidated ddi we have other examples uh, other other uh, reasons uh, uh, as well i mean why we you should go for a consolidated ddi solution like infoblox uh, the other other reason could be the network complexity which is growing as a result of initiatives such as uh, virtualization cloud adoption uh, byod etc so you will get a clear visibility onto the resources uh, uh, more than ever before uh, to to avoid uh, ip uh, duplicates and and service downtime and then i mean you you can get a, a scalable solution right i mean let's say you want to uh, uh, deploy a 500 vms cluster the network team cannot just manually update uh, uh, the the spreadsheet for each of the vms and create 500 dns records uh, so so i mean you need some some automation tool that can uh, uh, do this uh, seamlessly and then that's where our solution comes into picture we provide a consolidated D, uh, dns dhcp and ipam uh, services into a single platform uh, uh, there is an easy to use i'm sorry i think uh, the slides are changing i'm not changing that one sec yeah so uh, yeah so so uh, our our uh, um, ddi solution uh, provides a consolidated platform right i mean uh, we provide an easy to use management console and a central repository to keep all the information about all the networks ip addresses and then hosts all on that single platform uh, 
the the, the management console uh, provides access to uh, integrated uh, reporting and analytics we also have uh, ha and dr inbuilt uh, in our design uh, that ensures uh, no service downtime and um, Finally, we offer uh, flexible deployment options uh, uh, where you can deploy uh, your RR solution uh, on-prem as, as physical or virtual uh, appliances or uh, on the cloud. Yeah, so, so how do we provide uh, uh, this solution, this DDS solution? So uh, this is uh, provided via our Infoblox grid. So uh, this is what our grid looks like. So a grid is nothing but a group of two or more uh, NIOS appliances. Uh, these appliances can be uh, virtual or physical. And then these, these appliances share a common distributed database. Um, one of these appliances uh, uh, is this de designated as a grid master that uh, basically acts as a master or a controller of, of that entire grid. And uh, we have other appliances uh, that run as uh, a grid members. So uh, each grid member can run one or more services like DNS, DHCP, uh, IPAM, uh, and, and a host of other services, right? So, uh, and, and all the communication between uh, uh, the grid master and grid member uh, is encrypted and uh, uh, it is secured uh, with some uh, um, certificate-based authentication. So this, this communication uh, within the grid is entirely secure. And uh, normally we, we deploy grid masters as, as HA pairs to, to ensure service availability. Uh, now we also have uh, an application that is running on the grid master that we call uh, as grid manager uh, that uh, provides uh, uh, access to all the services that, that are running on the grid. Right. So basically you can control the entire grid uh, and then all the services that are running on the, on the grid via that console. So when I'll be giving you a demo, right, I'll be uh, uh, showing you how, how the uh, UI looks like uh, uh, for the grid master, grid, grid manager. Uh, okay, so uh, let's uh, move ahead. Yeah, so this is one uh, very important slide that talks about the cloud network automation and 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 uh, how powerful that is. So if you can see, uh, uh, we have two approaches mentioned here. One is the traditional approach, uh, where that that shows what steps you follow when you uh, manually provision uh, your network and and deploy a VM onto the network, right? So traditionally. Uh, uh, managing uh, networks uh, has been a, a manual process. When you want to provision a, a, a VM onto the cloud, let's say, typically uh, the process uh, that goes through uh, are shown in, in, in red color here. So and typically a member from the server team requests an IP address to, to uh, the network team. Network team allocates that IP address uh, via, for the, uh, via DHCP and uh, 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 once once the service team gets the IP address right, it, it forwards the IP address uh, to to some other team, let's say SecOps team, to keep an entry of that IP address and to see what kind of traffic is flowing through that. The network team then updates uh, the, that IP address as in use. So if you see these, uh, there are lots of back and forth happening here, right? I mean, one team is uh, uh, sending requests to other and then getting the IP address, then uh, storing the details somewhere else. So typically this takes a, a huge amount of time. And, and sometimes uh, we have seen that this may uh, take up to a month to, to get this uh, entire uh, thing done. So in short, this this process is uh, tedious and, uh, and, and prone to errors, right? Because most of the things are done manually. And that is why we have come up with a plugin uh, for, for Ansible, uh, where we are taking all these manual efforts uh, away from the user. And, and at the same time, we provide uh, complete visibility and, and control uh, on, the, on the DNS and uh, to, to the DNS and, and uh, network teams. And uh, this works in conjunction with uh, our Ansible automation. And uh, the key area where uh, uh, Infoblox solution adds value uh, is the automated uh, IP address and DNS registration of uh, your VMs. We, we actually maintain the entire life cycle of your workloads and uh, uh, 
and, and so it is not just as assigning the IP address and registering the DNS records, but uh, we also make sure that when your VM is terminated, uh, we, we update that information uh, uh, in our system as well and, and delete uh, uh, the DNS records and then reclaim that IP address so that that can be used uh, to uh, use for some other VM. And uh, on top of that, you can uh, implement any change in real time as, as the complete uh, process is automated, right? And uh, there are no tickets uh, going, going back and forth between different teams that will save you precious time. Uh, so uh, this is it from my side. Uh, I'll be coming up again later in this presentation and I'll be uh, uh, giving a short demo. Uh, so uh, now Sumit will take over and he'll, he'll talk about the integration. Thanks, Alesh. Uh, so, greeting, guys. Uh, so, my name is Somit Jaswal, and I'll be taking you guys through uh, this Ansible integration with Infoblox. So, just a brief introduction my, about myself is I am working as a senior software engineer in Ansible team, and I am also the core maintainer of uh, Ansible Infoblox modules. So, before going ahead and uh, explaining you guys about the integration. I just want to remind you guys uh, that you can submit your question in the Q&A window. So please do that. And uh, so with this, uh, I'll directly jump into the Infoblox integration with Ansible. So Infoblox an integration with Ansible started in Ansible version 2.5. So in Ansible version 2.5, uh, we were supporting five uh, Infoblox modules. And with the current Ansible version, that is 2.7. We are uh, we have included support for uh, as it is mentioned like thirteen modules, a lookup plugin, a dynamic inventory script, and all these modules that are currently being uh, part of two point seven of Ansible version are certified and jointly supported by Ansible and Infoblox. What that means is if you face a, a, if anybody is facing any issue or like he, uh, they are not able to uh, get things work. So they can directly raise a ticket or they can raise an issue to uh, Ansible or the Infoblox team and we can directly pitch in and we can try to resolve the issue that uh, the person is facing. Also, there is a scenario guide available at this particular link. So this uh, uh, don't uh, like, uh, so this slide will be shared to you all. So you can go ahead and uh, browse to this link and this has all the integration part and uh, how to get started with. So with this, I'll move ahead. Okay, so as you all know, in today's enterprise world, uh, yeah, so how important uh, and trivial automation uh, is a role automation plays. So as uh, Salesh has already talked to you about uh, that how tedious and cumbersome it's, uh, to manage DDI solution by a manual task or by manually. And with this integration of Ansible with Infoblox, uh, life of all the relevant uh, engineers are simplified even more. So uh, what that means is for networking professionals, this means that existing networking Ansible playbook can utilize existing Infoblox infrastructure for DDI, that is DNS, DHCP, and IPAM. Uh, also, Ansible and Infoblox developed this integration to automate DDI task within a playbook. So uh, just to give a brief about the Ansible playbook, uh, Ansible playbook is a YAML-based YAML -based text file that includes tasks to configure managed system. So uh, in other words, like a playbook allows an administrator to configure an entire environment by passing a script to many host networks or the cloud instances. So this is what it is uh, depicted in this slide and that anybody who is aware of uh, Ansible and Infoblox can directly go ahead and automate the DNS, DHCP and IPAM services. So uh, with this, uh, what is the required expertise? Uh, there is nothing uh, needed from an user perspective. It's just that uh, you should be familiar with Ansible and uh, you should be like aware of all the tasks that Ans uh, Infoblox TDI provides. Okay, so as I already mentioned, this Ansible Infoblox integration started with Ansible 2.5 version. And in that uh, 2.5 version of Ansible, only five modules were there. 
and with the current release of ansible that is 2.7 we have included uh, eight more modules and these are the modules uh, that are pr uh, currently being supported by ansible and infoblox so so as you can see the name uh, like the module name is written as uh, an ios a record and ios uh, double a double a record and ios c name record so so you can get the idea right uh, so if you have any interaction with infoblox you can just get an idea that this particular module will be configuring an ios a record if uh, we are calling an ios host record it will be called uh, it will be going ahead and configuring the an ios host record in infoblox and um, likewise like uh, an ios mx record an ios network an ios network v so so this an ios is uh, so we are taking it as prefix and the other part is like the module that you want to automate in infoblox instance so yeah with this i'll move ahead okay so so this is the ansible playbook that we will be using uh, for uh, automating the infoblox task so uh, i can i'll go through line by line and uh, please go ahead and if you face any issue or you have any queries you can just directly post in the q and window and probably in the later half we can discuss about uh, that uh, about the queries and stuff so as you can see i have taken example of an ios network view module so in this so this is the format ansible playbook is written in written in and uh, as you can see this is yaml file with the uh, so it starts with uh, three hyphens and so the first is the name so this is the name of the playbook so an ios network view what i have written is the name of the playbook and this connection is done locally so uh, i'm taking the host as local host and connection as local so now the fourth line says task so ansible playbook has a task which in uh, what it means is you can fire n number of tasks in single playbook so here I have taken only an iOS network view for example, but you can fire n number of tasks. Like you can go ahead and fire a network view and create a network and create a host record in the same playbook. So with different tasks. So, uh, so the first task is name. I'm giving the name uh, task a name like create network view. And the second line to that is an iOS network view. So here I have call here I'm calling the module that uh, I've already shown you at the uh, last slide that I, I'm calling the module an iOS network view and, and then I'm passing the arguments that is needed for these modules. So with an iOS network view, I have to pass more uh, argument like name. So it, this will go ahead and create a, an iOS network view with a Ansible new view name. And the second parameter that I'm passing is comment. Uh, comment so uh, you can give any comment so the third parameter is state so what does state means is in ansible playbook is like if you are going ahead and creating if you are going ahead and creating a new uh, uh, like network view you have to mention state as present so even if you don't mention state it will by default uh, by default the value of state is present so and also if you want to go ahead and delete the particular network view then you'll have to mention state as absent all this uh, whatever i'm talking about you can go through the scenario guide that i have uh, talked about earlier you can go through all the module and its argument that is uh, supported and what are the default argument what are the mandatory arguments all this is mentioned in the scenario guide so so taking uh, so uh, the fourth uh, argument that i'm passing is provider so provider is nothing it is just the user credential uh, of the NIOS instance that you will be using. So uh, in this, I am taking an IS provider is like uh, an IS provider is like a dictionary which has the value of host name, username, and password of the Infoblox instance that you are going to work with. So this is in short the Ansible playbook that you'll use to uh, automate the network view of Infoblox. So the second example I'll take is of an IS network. So in this, in this, the same I'm taking, I'm firing a task with the name configure an IPv4 network view. So in here, since I'm uh, going ahead and configuring an NIS network in Infoblox instance, then I'm 
calling NMS network module. And to this, I am passing the arguments like network, common, state, and provider. So state and provider, you can see in all the playbooks, state and provider would be there because if you have to create or you have to delete, you have to mention state as present or absent. Also in all the playbooks, playbooks you have to mention the provider section because provider deals with your NIOS instance, uh, which has the username, password, and host name of the particular ins uh, Infoblox instance. So yeah, so going forward. So now, so this uh, is an NIOS host record module. So I can take an example, like as uh, uh, Salesh was talking about that uh, in the earlier days, uh, people used to like manually uh, assign an IP to a particular uh, printer or a particular host, or if anybody uh, joins in new, then they have to uh, pass through the entire spreadsheet and check for the next available IP. And then uh, they used to give uh, the particular host IP to a respective printer or the host. So in this, you can see uh, we are going ahead and uh, automating the host record module and the host record part of Infoblox. So in this, I'm calling the host record module with the name uh, as test host ansible.com. I'm giving the IPO for address as uh, 196.11.0. So in this part, I'll talk to, uh, I'll talk about later because uh, uh, this, in this part, I am giving the static IP, but you can make this as a dynamic IP as well. You can just uh, call a lookup plugin that is being supported by Ansible and Infoblox, and you can just directly give the next available IP in this particular range. So in here, I have taken the static IPv4, but you can de de uh, definitely like uh, give a dynamic IP to this. So uh, not dynamic IP basically, so sorry, uh, not dynamic IP. It's like uh, you can assign dy uh, IP dynamically within the particular range using the Ansible Infoblox lookup plugin. So yeah, so this is the lookup plugin that, I'm, that I was talking about. So in this, as you can see, uh, this is the lookup plugin which actually queries the NI uh, Infoblox uh, NIOS objects and uh, it, Basically, it's uh, it's search within particular uh, host. If you I want to so, uh, search for a particular host, if you want to find uh, uh, next available IP, then these are the plugins that are available with this integration. You can directly use it, and you can get to the uh, relevant result. So in this, I am searching for the particular host. So as you can see, I am using uh, Ansible playbook, and in this, I am searching for uh, testansible.com as a host. So in this, I am giving a set fact and host record is, I'm looking up to NIS object and I'm giving filter name as, this is the particular syntax that you need to follow to uh, look to the particular object. So in this, I'll give the test host ansible.com as the name that, you, that I want to filter out. And then if this particular uh, uh, object is present in this, uh, in your host record, then definitely you'll get the result of uh, with the IP and, uh, and host all the information of the host Let's see moving forward so yeah so as i was talking about the next available ip from long time so this is that example so a so this next ip i can give at this place at ipv4 address i can give uh, the particular syntax uh, in the next available ip so from this lookup to the endpoint, I can give uh, as an input, and at that point, it will dynamically, dynamically search for the next available IP in that particular IP range that you have given. Like in this, I am giving the range as 192.168.11.0 and slash 24. So in this particular range, it will go ahead and search for the next available IP, and it will give you the result. So this is how you can resolve the earlier issues like uh, you don't have to maintain a spreadsheet or an excel sheet to and parse uh, the entire thing to uh, get to the next available ip so also ansible infoblox dynamic inventory is the thing that where you can list all the hosts that are that you are working with so this is the particular example that uh, you can use and you can uh, direct, uh, get all the hosts that are available. So this is the syntax for that. So uh, you can write host all task and debug and your all the hosts will be 
displayed in this format. Okay, so how Ansible and Infoblox works together is like a network engineer with uh, having a knowledge of Ansible and Infoblox DDI can achieve the round the clock network automation. And uh, what does this mean is like, uh, because uh, what benefit of what benefit Infoblox and Ansible uh, integration include is it implements Ansible throughout the data center and it leverages a common framework. Also, uh, it's like uh, it breaks silos and build bridges between the logical IT services. Uh, it also supports uh, Infoblox as a source of truth, enables dynamic inventory source of Ansible, and it extends uh, also it extends to Ansible Tower, allowing uh, RBAC for Infoblox function by a specific user at specific intervals. So this is how Ansible Infoblox integration works. And uh, as I've already talked to you about, uh, I am just covering the basics of it. You can go ahead and search the entire scenario guide and if you face any difficulties. So as you all know, and Ansible is an uh, open source project. So if you face any issues, uh, you can directly go ahead and log an issue at GitHub repository of Ansible. And since I'm the core maintainer of the modules, I'll directly pitch in and I will try to resolve the queries or the problem that uh, you guys are facing. So with this, I'll uh, transfer back the control to Salish we'll, uh, he, and he'll go through the demo sessions. Okay, thanks, Sumit. Uh, fine. So uh, before before uh, uh, going into the demo, uh, let's uh, talk a bit about the Infoblox client right? that sits on the Ansible environment. Uh, so uh, the Infoblox client uh, module uh, works as an abstraction layer between uh, Ansible and the Infoblox grid. And then, as I said, uh, this is uh, uh, installed on the control node, that is the Ansible server. Right? It is a Python client that enables uh, RESTful API calls that we call as uh, WAPIs to the Infoblox uh, grid. And all uh, all these WAPI requests right, are, are HTTP uh, requests uh, with a URL and a, and a body for, for relevant methods. And uh, mm, uh, this this Infoblox client too uh, is is developed as an open source and, and maintained on the GitHub by the community. And the advantage of having uh, Infoblox client running on an Ansible server is you don't need to know the WAPI and endpoints. You just have to write the playbooks and then run it, and this client will take care of the rest. Right. So uh, now with this, let's uh, uh, go into the demo session. Okay, so uh, before I start, uh, let me give you an idea of my environment. So I'm, I'm running Ansible server on uh, Ubuntu 18.04 uh, with Python version 3.6. And the, the Ansible version that I'm using is, is 2.7.2. And I'm, I'm running this on my uh, local machine. Uh, with with the infoblox client to uh, uh, infoblox client in, uh, installed uh, on on and that and now on the infoblox side uh, i have a grid master running uh, and and this is running on the cloud right so uh, i'm 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 and i'll uh, once uh, and and as i said i mean uh, since ansible is an agentless tool right it does not need any agent to be installed on the grid so you just can uh, fire the uh, playbooks and uh, you can have the communication uh, happening within i mean between uh, the ansible and uh, infoblox grid so uh, with this uh, uh, let me share my screen Yeah, so I hope uh, 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 the screen is shared. So uh, let's start the demo. So, uh, uh, so I have Ansible host running on this uh, machine, local machine, machine as I said, and then we have a grid uh, Infoblox grid running on the cloud. Uh, this is the grid manager UI uh, that I was talking about in the in the beginning of my presentation. So, 
here i have uh, certain modules i mean these uh, certain playbooks these playbooks are there on uh, github uh, uh, in the infoblox open repository you can go and download this so currently we have uh, uh, these uh, 11 uh, uh, playbooks as of now but uh, so, uh, sumit has uh, written some some other playbooks that are uh, currently under review and uh, will soon be uh, merged into the main branch so uh, uh, since Sumit has already explained uh, some of those playbooks, I'll not go deep into it. Uh, let me just uh, show you the one or two uh, playbooks. Uh, so so uh, this playbook uh, creates a network view on the Infoblox site. So I have I've provided the uh, NIOS details. Uh, uh, the host IP, the username and uh, password that are uh, needed uh, to, to access uh, Infoblox grid. And, and there are other details like uh, the, the name of the task that you want to perform, the ex uh, extensible attributes that, that you want to display on the Infoblox grid. So uh, let me run this. Yeah, so this is uh, this command is successful. Now, if I go and check the network views, I see uh, uh, a network view created here uh, named Ansible Net View, and uh, we passed some some uh, extraneous attributes right created uh, with Ansible. So, so that also is displayed here. Uh, now, uh, there's nothing inside it, so uh, I'll, I'll create some uh, uh, DNS views, uh, create one DNS view inside that. So let me run that uh, playbook. And if I refresh the UI, I'll have uh, DNS view created here. So Ansible DNS view is the one that we just created uh, now, created with Ansible, you can see here. And this is the default uh, uh, DNS view that was already there. So if you see here, uh, we have these default records. So we don't have any uh, zones and any of the other details added here. So I'll, I'll uh, create one zone here. Yeah, so uh, that playbook has created one uh, zone named ansiblezone.com. Uh, and uh, if you want to see what I have in that playbook. Yeah, so uh, I've given some some uh, details like create zone and the name of uh, that zone, ansiblezone.com, and what view this should be under. So this is under Ansible DNS view, and there are some other grid related details. So uh, uh, this is what it has uh, done, right? And now uh, I can uh, create a host record uh, as well. Uh, first of all, let me show you how, how we create networks. So uh, I'm creating a network 10.000 slash 24 under uh, Ansible net view. And uh, if I run this, this has created a network. Yeah, so this has created a network 10.0.0.24, and you can see all these IPs are unused. So similarly, you can you can uh, you can create hosts and uh, uh, host within within a, a DNS view. And now uh, I I wanted to show one more. Uh, uh, let me let me first create a host here. Yeah, so so this playbook uh, creates a host uh, host record, and uh, if you can see in in IPv IPv4 addresses, uh, you see there's there's something called lookup next next IP NIOS next IP. So what this does is it 
it scans through uh, the network that we just created and it checks the next available ip and uh, whatever ip is de- is available uh, it assigns uh, that to uh, to that host so if i run this playbook Yeah, so if you can see, uh, we have one host record created here with an IP 10.0.0.1. Since we uh, we don't have any any uh, IPs assigned to any of the hosts, this is the first available IP, and uh, uh, and it has assigned this to uh, this particular host. Now, I have one more uh, playbook that again that basically is a copied version of the previous YAML file, and. Uh, if I run this, this will create another host record with the next available IP. That will be 10.0.0.2. You can see here, the, you can you can get the next available IPs running these uh, uh, playbooks. And now, similarly, you can perform other operations and you can delete uh, uh, each of these uh, network objects. So, yeah, I think this is uh, what I, I wanted to demonstrate at this point. So I'll stop sharing uh, on my screen. And uh, I'll pass over the control to uh, Dave. Thank you, Zoyish. Appreciate that um, and that great demo. So uh, here we go. So question, this is question and answer time. Um, we saw some questions, uh, some good questions submitted through the Q&A chat box. Thank you very much. Uh, before we get to those, uh, though, I'd just like to remind uh, the audience, I, I saw that some people signed in uh, a few minutes after we started. So for those people um, who did come in late, just to, to let you know, uh, you will be getting a copy of these slides. Um, uh, so um, uh, so uh, if you miss something, you will be able to see at least the slide content. Uh, also, if uh, there's uh, something uh, in this presentation and demonstration that uh, piques your interest and you want to find out more, uh, suggest that you contact your local Ansible sales specialist or Infobox sales rep or reseller, uh, respective reseller as the case may be, to learn more. Uh, so now let's get to some other questions. Um, um, Samat, Samit, and um, Salish, uh, please come off mute because I'm going to are some of these some of these your way uh, as we get along as we come along here. So um, one question, uh, which was answered in chat, but I think it'd just be interesting to pass this along to the rest of the audience, is um, do we need the paid version of Ansible Power for this integration? Uh, this was answered in chat by Sumat, um, and the answer is no. Uh, you can use Ansible and um, Infobox modules directly without the Infobox Power. Um, I would like, like to add to that uh, response, though, that because the Infobox integration is part of the Ansible Certified Content Program uh, in Ansible Tower, uh, that means that the modules there uh, go to go to uh, complete uh, an exhaustive QA processes by both companies, uh, and we can track support uh, and do inform each other of issues and address them, um, such as the nature of of Ansible Tower. Um, is a question um, I'm going to ask Salish to answer this one, um, easy one, I think. Uh, what versions of NIOS are compatible with the integration? Uh, well, it is, uh, uh, we support NIOS uh, 7.3 onwards, Dave, uh, up to mm-hmm. our uh, latest release, NIOS uh, 8.3.2. Okay. That's a, here's a question. Um, Will support for smart folders, smart folders, smart folders, and extensible attributes be added, or will it be, or will it need to be scripted? Support for smart folders. Um, who wants to take that, or is that to get back to you? Kind of question. Mm, one sec, Dave. I'm just seeing where where that question is. Yeah, so can, can, can you help me with that? I mean, uh, I, I couldn't quite uh, hear your point. Okay, so the question is, will support for smart folder and extensible attributes be added added to the integration, I'm assuming? 
or will it need to be scripted? Uh, well, uh, I need to check that, Dave. Uh, not very sure on this. Okay. We probably right. can get back get back with with the answer to to the concerned person. Okay. So uh, yeah. we know who that is. Uh, cool. Uh, here's an interesting question, a nice open-ended question. I'll pass this along to uh, Sumak. The question simply is, how do we get started with Ansible? Yeah, I agree. That's a great question. So uh, it definitely, so uh, Ansible document you can start with. So Ansible document is a great place to start with uh, because Ansible documentation is like huge and you can directly follow along because it's laid out in a very uh, user-friendly manner. So definitely you can first, uh, uh, first thing that I will suggest is go ahead and uh, start looking into the Ansible document and uh, say if you have used ansible uh, or, or if you have used infoblox try starting with the, any of the modules then definitely you'll get the know how and feel how ansible works so so these will be the two uh, relevant uh, thing that i'll suggest okay uh, here's another question uh, i think uh, for either of you but maybe soon um, uh, how do you prompt for input from the user? I'm assuming this is in a playbook. How do you prompt for input from the user to make the process fully automated? So, uh, if when you are running the playbooks, you can uh, give the arguments in argument section. You can give the user input. Uh, for this, you'll have to like uh, go ahead and uh, check the Ansible document that how you go ahead and in the command line argument, how you pass on the arguments. So you can definitely do that. Okay. <laughs> another, here's another question. Um, the, the, most of the questions are technical, which is great. Um, can, can you create a network container using Ansible? I think I know the answer to that, but um, I'll throw that out. Network well, uh, Dave, we can we can Ansible. create a network view uh, as I uh, showed in my demo. We can create a network view. I think uh, the I think Kevin is referring to uh, uh, the same same point, I guess. So we can yes, we can create a network view uh, using Ansible. Okay. Let's see. Next question: Does Ansible allow me to call a playbook and pass it and pass command line parameters to the playbook? Yes, uh, as I already mentioned, you can uh, pass command line argument while running the playbooks. For this, you can directly go ahead and search in Google that how you pass the command line argument along with running the playbook. You can directly do that. Okay. Next question. Can a PTR, uh, I'll, I'll assume one or both of you know what PTR is, and a PTR be added at the same time that A records get registered? So for this, I believe uh, uh, currently we have a separate module for PTR record creation, PTR creation and A record creation. So I believe we cannot do that at the same time, but definitely I can give a check. And if you want, you can go, uh, go ahead. Uh, and if it is not allowing you, you can directly go ahead and log a GitHub issue regarding this. Okay. Is is the Infoblox Wappy 100% compatible with the Infoblox API, parenthetically, Perl? Uh, well, uh, we were supporting Perl in our uh, previous NIOS uh, releases, but uh, I think starting 8.3, we have completely deprecated uh, uh, the Perl API. So now it is completely Wappy. OK. Um, so here's a question that was answered. So I'll pass that one by. Can can you? I assume that's that would be the programmer slash user. Can you request the next available IP address within a subrange of an existing subnet? Can you request the next available IP within within a subrange yes, of an existing? Fine. Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, let's say. <laughs> My screen keeps moving. 
is there a way of configuring DHCP pools with Ansible info with Ansible infobox info modules? Is there a way of configuring DHCP DHCP pools with the integration? Uh, well, I don't think we have that uh, facility uh, at this point, uh, uh, yes. Uh, Sumit. Yes, you are correct, uh, Salesh. So we don't have uh, a module for creating and configuring DHCP pool as of now. Okay. Okay. That sounds like something we may want to do, uh, take as customer input for um, for future consideration. <clears throat> Um, here's a question that, that was answered directly, but uh, just for the, for the entire audience. When you run the playbooks, should you run it against the master or against the group members? Uh, Sumit, you want to take that one again? Yes, uh, so you can run your playbooks against your grid members uh, or uh, the master, both. You can run either on master or on the grid members as well. Well, yeah, just just an uh, update on, on top of uh, Sumit's answer. So you can run uh, these playbooks on grid members only when you, when when the grid members uh, run as the cloud platform members, right? Then only you can run these commands or you can send WAPI calls to uh, grid members. Else, uh, the 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 calls go directly to grid master. Okay. Another question. Uh, say I do not see any any module for DHC. This, this is this is I think in the same vein. I do not see any module for DHCP support. Is, it, is that a correct observation that there is no module for DHCP support? Yeah, that's correct. correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Again, something good, 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 uh, good customer input, prospective customer input. Okay. Another question. Um, I thought a host record was both A and PTR. I guess that's a confirmation. I thought a host record was both A and PTR. Is it a host record? Uh, well, a uh, host record is very internal to uh, Infoblox. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can say that it is uh, both A, A and PTR. I mean, this is, there, there's, no, there's no convention of, uh, of a host record, but yes, I mean, uh, in a nutshell, it is a combination, you can say, of A and PTR. Okay. So, um, let's say, going to the end, we have two more questions. Um, this one is already. This one was answered already directly, but I think it. I think it's worth uh, repeating for the entire audience. Ansible is. is uh, let me just rephrase. Is Ansible an alternative to writing my own Infobox API scripts? Sumat, so uh, you answered it before. You want to take another crack? Yeah, so uh, definitely uh, Ansible is an alternative of writing your own Infoblox API script, as you have already told. So, uh, but yeah, definitely Ansible gives you a better approach of handling all this solution. You don't have to write a script. Also, uh, Ansible gives you advantage in terms of I dependency because uh, in script, you cannot check that, uh, that particular thing that you are going to fire the request. It's already configured or not. But in Ansible, you get the uh, get that advantage that if uh, the particular thing is already configured, uh, Ansible won't uh, go ahead and uh, apply the changes again. But in case of scripts and all, uh, in case of any script, uh, this thing would be there. So you definitely get the n number of advantage using Ansible with respect to your uh, directly using the uh, Infoblox API scripts. Okay, I believe that answers your question. Super. Okay, last two questions. We're uh, really, <clears throat> really into the programming, which is great. Um, can I request the next available IP address in a scope and choose the start point? Let's say start from dot nine and never pick an address below that. Definitely, you can. So you can uh, check for a particular range. Within the, this particular range, you want the next available IP, or definitely you can go ahead and block certain uh, uh, saying that okay, you don't want these two IPs, and rest of the uh, from you want you don't want these two IPs to be given as the next available IP at any point of time. So you can either block, you can uh, also you can uh, choose from a particular range as well. Okay, 
super. Last question. Um, we're, we're, we're getting to the top of the hour. Uh, and another addressing question, IP address question. If you don't, if you don't want to give the IP address between a range, um, say one to fifteen, in the network, when a get next IP address, can you state? I guess this is when when you do a get next IP address command, can you state it to give an IP address after dot fifteen? Yes, I already said that. Uh, so. Uh, uh... You can give uh, like a, from 15, you want the next available IP. So let's suppose you are having a range and you want to specify saying that, okay, from this particular range, you want the next available IP. Definitely you can do that. Great. I think we addressed uh, maybe not 100%, but probably about 90% of the questions that were submitted. So, Sumat and so we thank you very much for, for fielding those questions. Um, thank you to the audience for submitting those questions. Uh, if, if any if any questions uh, arise afterwards, uh, you'll notice that in the slides we send you, um, we have conveniently or conveniently provided you both Sumat and Salisha's email address. So uh, apologies uh, or whatever uh, to them, but uh, feel free to email. Uh, I'm sure Sumat and, and Salisha will be happy to answer questions directly as well. Uh, but with that, thanks everybody for attending. We appreciate you again spend, spending some time with us. Uh, we hope we answered anything, um, any of your questions uh, or all the questions that you have. Uh, and again, if you need more information, do reach out to us. We are happy to help. Thanks, uh, and have a great rest of your day.